to do for the training we are advocating on GBB and FGM. The training here is very important because I believe uh, FGM and gender-based violence uh, is more prevalent in the rural Gambia than in urban areas. So having the training being decentralized to places all across the country is very important, most especially um, that it has been confirmed that LLR has a high rate of FGM, which is a form of gender-based violence. That movement for comparison. And from the latest DHS, we are 94 percent. 94 out of every 100, that's only six girls being left out. That's a huge number. And that's a number too much for us to just put aside. According to the World Bank, about 5 percent of lives lost among women, aged 15 to 44, are as a result of gender-based violence. Is there a reason why we have to go through pain when we don't have to go through pain? It's good to ask ourselves some of these questions. And it's not just enough for a lot to say this is bad, we need to stop it. It's up to the people to be willing to stop it once they have received information that is enough to convince them. So the, just as the title of the event implies, it's a training of advocates and in that we gather 20 youth advocates from within the LRR region to train them on advocacy skills, to train them on how best they can go into their communities and advocate against all forms of gender-based violence, especially FGM. And we feel they are supposed to be change agents within their communities because they're influential young people who are effecting change gradually and um, in, in their little own ways. So we feel they will be able to make effective change in their communities if they are trained and equipped with the skills that they need. So anytime we advocate, it is important to always have something to back up the facts that we say. If we say that FGM is harmful, is a harmful traditional practice, is a harmful traditional practice because it endangers the life of an individual or it causes health implications, it is always important to have something to back up that fact. You cannot stop any violation when you don't know what your rights are. So therefore, it is incumbent on you to make sure that you research, learn. Advocacy helps you to develop yourself routine. Then you can help other people develop. But if you are not developed inside, in your heart, you are having contemplations about that topic, and it becomes very difficult for you to talk about it. Before you can create change, you need to be your own change. I think your woman can only give skills. We cannot give you passion. We cannot give you interest. So it is for you as advocates to have the passion for what you advocate for, to believe in what you advocate for, and to have the zeal for what you advocate for. These are qualities that every advocate must possess. You cannot be advocating against gender-based violence when deep down inside, you're actually for the practice. The question is, is there any of you here that is an advocate but still believes that FGM practice is good? Who is yes. here? Yeah, who believes that the practice is good? FGM is good and you would like people to continue with the practice. Can you please raise up your hand? All right, great. Like I said earlier, I respect your opinion and I'll give you time to tell us why you still believe it. Recently amended to now be called the Women's Amendment Act. 
Violence includes physical, mental, and emotional, psychological, sexual, verbal, or emotional maltreatment or assault. Anything that is done to you, knowingly or unknowingly, that is going to hamper with or tamper with you being your best self is a form of violence. So anything that we're not comfortable with, something that is going against our wishes, something that violates our rights as human beings, is violence against us. Gender-based violence is brought, and there are many forms. So choosing uh, FGM and child marriage out of it as forms of gender-based violence are very important because these are practices that are happening in our communities. And for advocates to know about it and get to the people, talk to them about it, could influence change. So there are effects of uh, FGM safety. One, the, the, the broad effect is that it's a human right violation and it has no known medical benefits. The victims are denied of normal sexual rights and in extreme cases, that can occur, right? This is a prohibition that is in the Women's Act of the Gambia. It is an amendment to the, pro to the Women's Act of the Gambia, and it is amended under Section 32 of the Women's Act that a person shall not engage in female circumcision. And if you engage in female circumcision, you commit an offense, and you are liable for a conviction of terms of three years or a fine of $50,000 or both. And where female circumcision causes death, you may be held and sentenced to life imprisonment. The first culprit comes from our LRA, right? And then the court is, on, on, is, is going on. Here in Masako, they have a C4 sitting and then the second sitting is also on. And then the first sample also will be set on us, so therefore, this is a big lesson for us. For me as a governor, I don't want it to repeat itself here. And I'm sure you people also will stand by that to make sure that it doesn't repeat itself. So sexual and reproductive health rights is also a component of human rights, you know, that people are yearning for. So, um, and that is not only looking at the individual, but also looking at how, how physical the person is going to be and also the mental, his or her mental well-being. And um, it needs, it, it needs must be met for both men and women. That sexual and reproductive health rights must be met for, uh, for every man, whether you are a man or woman, you must have to have that right on, uh, on your sexuality. Yeah, um, I believe that you know, um, having this training, youth to train on myths and misconception, is important, very, very important to clear their doubts. Because you now we have in our society uh, people dying or people living with complications because of the myths and misconceptions. But once it is actually clear to them as young people, you realize they will go with that notion that well, the one we are having in society, they are not actually good belief, but we have to go away from them. The practice really should be destroyed. I think Islamic session is very key to this training because um, religion is used as a basis of most of this practice, especially FGM. People justify the practice that it is religious, that is why they, they do it. And even gender-based violence, the religious is used as a base to this. So it is very important to bring someone who will interpret this, the scriptures and tell us what it really is. Because most of us did not know in the training that that this is not a religious practice. It is very closely associated with religion and that is why most of the participants were in for it. So I think bringing a religious leader to clarify this issue is very key in the training. You know, tradition is as old as mankind, right? And tradition have embedded a lot of things that are being inculcated in our culture. Culture itself can be seen as a living organism whose structure is constantly renewed. So therefore, all the bad things that we have in our tradition, now we can transform others and then put them to a test that will suit our society.
I think my mindset, probably I may not talk, talk about that because my mindset is left to me whether I will believe in what you are saying or not. But already me, I have convinced that FGM has a lot of implications in terms of health. Health implications. Even in Islam, even in Islam, if you are doing something that may also affect your health and you cannot be able to worship Allah, you stop even continue helping, uh, worshiping Allah. Personally, I may say that I'm changed and I'm convinced enough to uh, know that FGM uh, definitely has an impact to development, has an impact to health. What we are looking for is the productive society. Yeah, before this training, I was thinking that ministry or government should have modernized FGMC and trained professionals to carry out FGMC instead of a total ban. But after this training, I realized I know that there are a lot of implications even if our FGMC is modernized. At least, if not never, I have learned new things that have enhanced my understanding about FGM. And I'm really happy as an advocate to go outside there, to advocate to people who have maybe a narrow understanding as to what FGMC is and gender-based violence. It affects everybody. Um, it's a violation of the fundamental human rights of the person, especially women and girls. When you violate somebody, be it physically, sexually, emotionally, or psychologically, you are violating the human rights of that person first. Secondly, is a violation of our national laws. We have the Domestic Violence law, uh, Act, we have the Sexual Violence Act. These are laws and the Women's Act and the Children's Act that are all um, against uh, violence against women and children. <laughs> Are we being fair to ourselves? Are we being fair to our partners, our sisters? What are we doing wrong that we need to change? If they've decided to speak up, can't we accept them because they are the only ones who know how it feels? We've not been through it. If she has been through it, definitely we can't have more accurate information than she who has been through it. That's absolutely not very easy.